22. This one's a fun one. I like these, but we've got to do quite a bit here. First question A is, what's the critical numbers? Well, luckily, very easy derivative. 3x squared minus 12x. Damn. You like those, don't you? What do we do with that to find critical numbers? You set it equal to 0. So the derivative is this. You set it equal to 0. Now, you could try to use quadratic formula or something, but there's a simple factoring here. And you pull out a GCF. Don't forget. What do you got? This one's going to be 3x equals 0, and this one, x minus 4 is 0. So this one, I heard some of you, this one is 0, and this one is 4. Now, the goal here, those are the critical numbers. Okay, wait, do these points exist? Could I plug these back in and get a value? Yeah. Polynomials are always continuous. They exist. Okay. The second part of the question is, it wants to know where is this graph increasing? Where is it decreasing? Now, if these are critical numbers, aren't they hills or valleys? So aren't the critical numbers where your increasing, decreasing change? That's why they're critical. Critical numbers are points where your slopes change from positive to negative or something. So we're going to separate intervals according to these right here. So I'm just going to make a little table. My first, I am going to go from this first part is x is less than 0. My second part is going to go from 0 to 4. And my third part is going to be x is greater than 4. You guys okay with that so far? If I want to find out where it's increasing, decreasing, aren't these my critical numbers, these lines? So aren't we going to find out if my slope here is positive or negative? If my slope here is positive or negative? My slope here is positive or negative? Your critical numbers are the only places where your slope will change. So you've got to consider that. So all we're going to do here is plug in any value you want that's less than 0 to the derivative. So what's the easiest number? Probably negative 1. And do you even care what the output is? You just care if it's negative or positive, don't you? Don't you just want to know if the slope is positive or negative, down or up? So is this pretty obvious? This is going to be like 3 plus 12. Do you even have to finish it? I will. But isn't your slope positive? If your slope's positive, doesn't that mean it's what? Increasing or decreasing? So. For values less than zero, do you understand your graph is always going to go uphill? Okay. Next, right here. In this interval, choose a value. I like one. One and zero are my favorite. Zero is taken. It's the line right here. So let's plug in one. Again, any number works because all the things between these two points will have the same slope. Because the only way they could turn around is at critical numbers. So what do you got? 3 minus 12, which is negative 9. So that's negative, right? What's the slope? Decreasing. And the last one, 5 or 1 million? I think I want 5. That's your only two choices. Okay, and you got 75 minus 60. Now, are you guys catching on? You don't have to care if your ants, you don't have to actually find the value. Do you guys got that? You're just knowing if it's positive or negative. Okay, from that table, can you tell, if you do a table like this, I know this interval, you put the word increasing, I can tell that. And that's good enough. Got it? I can see that. I can see this. 
The last question. You answered, that's B. C is asking you for where the maxes and mins. Well, isn't this a critical number? Isn't this a hill or a valley? And what does it say we did? We increased to decrease. So isn't increasing to degree, decreasing, increasing to decreasing? What does that mean it's going to be? A what? A max. And what's this one doing? Isn't it decreasing to increasing? So isn't that a min? By the way, usually they want the coordinates of them. This one's going to be what? What's the first number going to be? What's the interval? What's the line was what? Four, and this one was zero. And don't make the mistake here. You know what some of you are going to do? You're going to plug zero where? By mistake. Into the derivative. That's not what you're finding. When you're trying to find a coordinate, don't you plug it in the original? It's common mistake. By the way, what would the derivative equal if you plugged it in? One equals zero because isn't that what we did in the beginning? <laughs> You're like, hey, they're both zero. Wait, I messed up. So plug in zero, nice, you get 15. I love zero. You should too. Four to the third, is that 64? Yeah. Minus, ooh, six times 16, anybody know that? Six times, wait, yeah, six times 16, right? Is it 96? Yeah. Plus 15, so wait, 96 minus 30. Negative. Is that 32? Negative. negative 32 plus 15 is negative 17. Is that good? So this right here and this right here is problem C. And problem D is graph it and look at it to make sure you're right. Play with your graphs at home whenever you can with these. Look at them, make sure it makes sense.